The sad fact of the matter is that when we take a look at this, we never see ourselves represented in mainstream media outside of token people who, who they've decided are good enough right when we when we see ourselves in mainstream media oftentimes they pick one of us and they ride that wave until that person is exhausted right we saw that with laverne cox we're starting to see that with angelica ross we're starting to see that with a lot of the members of the cast of pose they find one black girl who looks like a black girl and then they ride her until she can't ride anymore and there are so many black women in the trans community that are doing the work that you don't have to ride one of us like a cash cow all the way to the top of diversity don't call us in to train you don't don't call us in to diversify you. Don't call us in to educate you about our struggles and then turn around and put people in blackface. Don't turn around and put people in tan face. Stop curling white women's hair when you can go and find somebody who is literally mixed. Stop, you know, like stop giving people perms and wigs to look like us when you can literally just hire us. Stop asking us to be more black or be less black. Stop asking us to act like these things are not happening and stop acting like the victim. At the end of the day, I need for people to understand that there is nobody that is more victimized than a black trans woman. There is nobody that is killed more in this community than a black trans woman. And so the idea of you all being upset that I'm holding a white woman accountable for what I believe is an actual oversight and not an intentional blackfish is a problem for me. The fact that whenever black people stand up and we say something about this, there's always a rebuttal about something that white people aren't allowed to do. What about all of the things that black folk are not allowed to do? I am not just a black trans trans woman. I am not just, you know, a, a, a trans woman for the sake of being trans. And I'm not just going to agree with things because they're a part of the community. As a black woman, I cannot turn off my blackness when I walk into a space. As a black woman, I cannot walk into a room and, and put on white face and nobody knows that I am black. But the fact of the matter is that white people can go and get the right tan and convince everybody in the space that they are anything other than white and then take it off when it's at their convenience. Those things are things that speak to the struggle that black people have every single day because if I go into a job and that person is racist I can't go outside and say give me a second let me wash off this number five tan but a white person can and that is what we're trying to get white folks to understand what we're also trying to get white folks to understand is stop asking us to educate you and then turning around and doing the same thing every single time I am so sick and tired of white people underneath the post of black people who are doing the work saying thank you for doing this work this work is amazing this work is awesome I can't wait to elevate this. And then the second that you get a chance, you slap us in the face by doing something that is completely adjacent or indifferent to the work that you just thanked us for doing. Stop asking black people to educate you and then using that education to uplift the voices of white people. Stop asking black folks to educate you and then not putting them in spaces and rooms to be able to be the voice of the education. Stop asking black people to give you our time. Stop asking us to give you our energy and then turning around and being upset when we call out the disenfranchised of black people based on the smallest of things. The reason that a lot of you don't have a problem with what this picture represents is because you've never been afflicted by what truly happens when people show up in their truth and in their honesty as a black person because a large amount of you are not black. And the couple of you that do agree with it are people who don't understand that it's beyond you and the fact that you haven't had this struggle or you don't know anybody that's had this struggle. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the stories. The proofs are in all the little black girls who have been sent home for having dreadlocks. The proof is in all the little black girls who have been sent home because their beads were too loud. The proof is in all of the little girls who have gotten perms because their hair was too distracting for their white moms who think that having a black child is going to save them from the idea of being racist. That is not how that works. This is more than a picture. And the reason that this picture really drew me in is because this is a picture that was taken by people in the community and serves for people in the community. And it was supposed to be a message around diversity and there was nothing diverse about it. It was a bunch of white passing people with spray tan. It was a bunch of light skinned people with spray tan. We have to move past this idea of questioning it every single time a black person tries to tell you what is fucked up about what white people do to us, whether they are indeed doing it on purpose or whether it's woeful ignorance. We cannot allow white people to do things that trigger us and then say nothing and allow those things to sit on us and then sit on us and then sit on us because we don't wanna seem like the angry black people. 
The reason that I debated making this video, the reason that I even debated posting this was because I didn't want to seem like the angry black girl that was just jealous of Gigi Gorgeous. Because that's exactly how some people are going to paint this. But what you all miss is that there's going to be some little black girl who is mixed that is going to look at that picture not knowing who Gigi is and feel represented. She's going to feel represented by a false sense of self. She's going to look at that picture and thinks that she sees herself not knowing that the woman at the top of that ladder is not her. Not knowing that the woman at the top of that ladder does not know her struggle. Not knowing that the woman at the top of that ladder has never had to face the things that she's had to face as somebody who is a mixed person in America. As somebody who is a light-skinned black woman in America. What y'all don't understand is that this is bigger than somebody getting a tan and a black person being afraid or offended or pissed off by it. This is more than some bullshit agenda for me being upset that Gigi is a pretty white woman. This is about the fact that if we don't continue to correct people before it gets bad, there is a miseducation of children who have to deal with these things on a daily basis. Within the black community, there are already enough sideline and sub bar conversations about being dark skinned versus being light skinned, about understanding what it means to be a mixed person and about black people not thinking that people who are mixed are indeed black. And then we have people who are white showing up looking like the people who are actually going through some of these things and making them feel misaligned with their own culture. It's okay for white women to go and get braids and show all of these things off and, and, and call them something iconic and call it fashionable. But let a black woman go into work. The same job she's had for the last five or ten years. And one day she decides that she's going on her trip to Jamaica and before she leaves, she's going to get her hair braided. And they're the most beautifully intricate braids, the most neat and put together braids you ever did see. But on her, they're unprofessional. On Kim Kardashian, they're eclectic. That is the problem with the images like the one that got Mick posted. That is the problem with Gigi's shade being one, say, one shade too dark. That is the issue with the erasure of black trans women's voices in the community. We don't just have one struggle. We are not just a monolith of people who go through one thing. I am so sorry that the oppression of white trans people stops at your transness, but it does not stop there for black trans folks. It does not stop there for non-binary black femmes. It does not stop there for people in the black community and the people of color community who have to deal with the idea that some people of color also pass for white. And while we want to understand your struggle as a person of color, as a black person, we don't get to have that privilege. It is not often that we get to choose the way that we show up in society because they paint a picture about you and who you are or who you might be from the second that you walk in the door because of your skin tone. And that is what is wrong with that picture. This is not me trying to set up a space to bash Gigi Gorgeous. This is not me trying to set up a space to ruin Got Mixed profile on freaking Drag Race, a show that I don't even watch or indulge in. This is me reminding people that there is an oversight that continues to continue to continue to continue to happen within the white community. And it's gotta stop. This is me holding my community accountable. This is me being a responsible person and asking that the folks who don't get it come in and listen to the stories of black people who do. So that the people who don't experience it can understand where the pain comes from. So that the people who've never had to go through it understands why it's not okay. This goes so much deeper than just an Instagram post by a couple of people. This is an oversight that continues to happen. It happened with Ivy Park. It happens all the time with these ads that we see of these racially ambiguous kids. It happened with the monkey sweater for H&M. It continues to happen with all of our transgender and non-binary people having their bodies photoshopped to look more cis-normative. 
It happens with some of our fat bodied friends who have their bodies photoshopped into shapes that are more acceptable for society to digest. It happens with black people every single day because our bodies are not digestible unless they are frail and pale and topped with loose curls. And so what I am simply asking is that white people understand that imagery is everything. Because unlike you, black people are not afforded the ability to just post whatever we want to post and not think about it and not think about the consequences that they might have. Every single thing that dark skinned black people do, that visibly black people do is calculated because everything that we do has a consequence based on our skin tone. And if you don't understand that to be true, I just told you. This is not a bashing video. This is not a call to action video. It's a video based on education so that you can elevate your mindset around the issues. If you are truly an ally, if you are truly a person who is marginalized, if you are truly a person in this community who says that you want to support black people, support black trans women, then understand that oversights like getting a tan that is a, two, a few shades too deep is an aggression. Understand that posting images about diversity and leaving black trans women out of them, visibly black trans women out of them, when visibly black trans women are dying, is not okay. Understand that your allyship cannot start and stop at your Instagram post and the shares on your story. Understand that we need the visibility because without it, we continue to die, we continue to be erased from culture, and we continue to be pacified. We continue to be tokenized. And we're tired of it. We're tired of having to force the black community to respect us, the white community to see us, and the LGB community to get it. <laughs>